Good morning. God welcomes us here to church to worship him and also online. And for those of you who are online, you might like to know that the weather is absolutely horrible here and there's a lot of flooding. And therefore, the people that are in church, um, number one, two, three, four, five, six of us. But Jesus says where two or three are gathered, then he is there too. This is the God who, in the words of Jesus, <clears throat> says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live, even though they die. The title for this service is Resurrection Hope. And what a hope that is. One that we as Christians should be offering our world. As our first hymn points out, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun Let us pray. God of creation, you've given us so much and we are truly blessed. Thank you for your constant guidance throughout our lives, for your wisdom in all things, for the way in which your word encourages, inspires, feeds us and sustains us in our daily spiritual lives. You, Lord, speak to us through many different ways, the seasons, the landscape, even the weather, through the stories of old and the word of the prophets. But most of all, you speak to us in and through the life of Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Saviour. For his willingness to come to earth to show us the way back to you, we bring you our praise for his willingness to intercede in our behalf in heaven, for the way in which your spirit guides our spirits, and for the promise he's made to return one day to bring your kingdom in, in all its fullness and glory, we bring you our praise. For all the ways you've guided us, supported us, and for all the ways you continue to lead us through life, we give you our heartfelt thanks. Yet all too often we recognise we've failed you, we've not followed you, we've ignored you, our lives have been too busy to notice you. We come in humility to you, Lord God, asking that you would hear our sorrow 
for the things we've done which are wrong, for the things that we've not done which we should have happened. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts that you say, my child, your sins are forgiven. Come, follow me once more. In our token of our willingness to do that, we offer you ourselves, our time, our talents, our money, to be used by you to bring your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray and say together the family prayer which is on the screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading is by Andrew Lane from Selkirk. Uh, this reading is from Corinthians chapter 15, verses 35 to 38 and 42 to 50. Someone will ask, how can the dead be raised to life? What kind of body will they have? You fool, when you plant a seed in the ground, it does not sprout to life unless it dies. And what you plant is a bare seed, perhaps a grain of wheat or some other grain, not the full-bodied plant that will later grow up. God provides that seed with the body he wishes he gives each seed its own proper body. This is how it will be when the dead are raised to life. When the body is buried, it is mortal. When raised, it will be immortal. When buried, it is ugly and weak. When raised, it will be beautiful and strong. When buried, it is a physical body. When raised, it will be a spiritual body. There is, of course, a physical body, so there has to be a spiritual body. For the scripture says, the first man, Adam, was created a living being but the last Adam is the life-giving spirit. It is not the spiritual that comes first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first Adam, made of earth, came from the earth. The second Adam came from heaven. Those who belong to the earth are like the one who was made of earth. Those who are of heaven are like the one who came from heaven. Just as we wear the likeness of the man made of earth, so we will wear the likeness of the man made from heaven. What I mean, friends, is that what is made of flesh and blood cannot share God's kingdom, and what is mortal cannot possess immortality. God's words to us today. Just as we bear, we are the likeness of the man of earth, so we will wear the likeness of the man from heaven. <clears throat> what a powerful statement that is. We've been thinking about the marks of mission which will allow us to engage with our community here in the 21st century. We've seen from last week that spiritual renewal is a key to new life. And here in the lectionary passage for today, we find ourselves with the statement above, wearing the likeness of the man from heaven. Ponder that statement for a moment. The Bible describes two states of existence. One is the natural body that we have here on earth. Because we chose not to follow God's way of living, these have become temporary and subject to decay. But there is still hope. The hope of a new body in the life to come following life here on earth, one which will enable us to wear the likeness of the man from heaven. The one stems from the other, the latter beginning in the here and now. The Greeks had problems thinking of resurrection of the body because they believed wholeheartedly in the resurrection of the spirit. 
They believed that a divine spark of fire came into the body at birth and left it at death, returning into God's holy presence, being absorbed into him again. The Jews were in two categories. One, the Sadducees didn't believe in anything after death at all. But the others had some shady existence, Sheol, Hades, not really anything very pleasant, I suspect. A belief in a grey place where the dead lived in a shadowy, ghostly existence. But then there was a development of a new life to come, a resurrection of the body. And that came to fruition very much when Jesus came back from the dead. Paul doesn't go into exact detail about the nature of our risen bodies, but he does make comparisons. He tells us that the evidence surrounds us. Honest saying, how blind can you be? The creator has already written into nature the principle of death and resurrection. Think of a seed, a tiny brown shriveled seed placed into the ground and in a while up pops a beautiful green shoot and then a beautiful flower. The seed pod dissolves and the, the green shoot grows, the flower emerges. The seed's gone but it's the same plant. A different world emerges. There's no difference. There's no visual likeness between a seed and a plant. You would never guess that a tomato or what it would look like by looking at a tomato seed. What we plant in the soil and what grows out of it doesn't look anything alike. The dead body that we bury in the ground and the resurrection body that comes from it will be dramatically different. Think too of our own lives, a small embryo growing into a fetus, lovely and warm, well fed and cared for, not having any work to do except just being. Then one day your world caves in quite literally The walls that surround you squeeze you and squeeze you and squeeze you and till out you pop in a new life, a life where you have to fend for yourself, a life where your body grows and develops, matures and then ages till another journey awaits you. The fetus has no notion whatsoever of another world outside the womb until it's born. That obviously doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. I remember reading the following in keynotes, and I think it was back in 2015, because I must have copied the words, and it was 2015 that my files saved as. And it's a conversation between twins in the womb. One asked the other, do you believe in life after delivery? The other replied, why, of course, there has to be something after delivery. Maybe we are here to prepare ourselves for what will be later. Nonsense, said the first. There is no life after delivery. What kind of life would it be? The second said, I don't know, but there will be more light than here. Maybe we'll walk with our legs and eat from our mouths. Maybe we'll have other senses that we can't understand now. The first replied, that's absurd. Walking's impossible. And eating with our mouths? Ridiculous. The umbilical cord supplies nutrition and everything we need. But the umbilical cord is so short, life after delivery is to be logically excluded. The second insisted, well, I think there's something, and maybe it's different than it is here. Maybe we won't need this physical card anymore. The first replied, nonsense, and moreover, if there is life, then why has no one ever come back from there? Delivery is the end of life, and in the after delivery, there is nothing but darkness, silence, and oblivion. It takes us nowhere. 
Well, I don't know, said the second, but certainly we'll we'll meet mother and she will take care of us. First replied, mother? You actually believe in mother? That's laughable. If mother exists, then where's she now? The second said, she's all around us. We're surrounded by her. We are of her. It is in her that we live. Without her, this world would not and could not exist. Said the first, well, I don't see her. So it's only logical that she doesn't exist. To which the second replied, sometimes when you're in silence and you focus and you really listen. You can perceive her presence. You can hear her loving voice calling down from above. The Christian belief is that there is another dimension to our lives. Once we die and the living we do in the here and now equips us for the new life and the new world to come. Think too of a chrysalis or caterpillar, a pupa, limited by its body until one day the butterfly soars away from freedom and constraint into a new way of living. Paul says, look at nature with all the different types of bodies for different habitats, fish for water, animals for ground, birds for the air. So why can there not be a different type of body for heaven? One which we wear as the likeness of the man from heaven. First and foremost, it's a body that will never fade or decay as happens in this world. There's plenty of adverts in a multi-million pound industry, isn't it, to prove that we fade and decay in this life. But in the next life, our bodies will never fade. And Paul goes on, and this is in the New International Version, it's sown in dishonor, raised in glory, Sown in weakness, raised in power, glory and power, doxa, dunamis, the end of the Lord's Prayer. And then in Philippians 3.21, it says, He will change our weak mortal bodies and make them like his own glorious body, using that power by which he is able to bring all things under his rule. Just think. A body capable of experiencing God's glory and God's power in all its might. Our physical bodies are incapable of coping with the glory of God. If we're going to be like the risen Christ, then we need to be transformed into his likeness. This body weak, our future body full of glory and power. What a thrilling prospect. Wearing the likeness of the man from heaven means allowing the risen Jesus to transform our whole lives as we invite his spirit in so that he might grow his fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. I wonder how much time we spend thinking about what we're going to wear day by day. I wonder how often we shop for new clothes and how much do we spend. We were talking about spiritual renewal last week. That takes time and effort. It means opening ourselves up to the creator of the universe. Creator who made me, me. In order to allow him to transform what I've become into what he originally planned. Benjamin Franklin evidently wrote his own epitaph, and here's what he wrote. The body of B. Franklin, printer, like the cover of an old book, its contents torn out and stripped of its lettering and gilding, lies here, food for worms. But the work shall not be wholly lost, for it will, as he believed, 
here once more in a new and more perfect edition, corrected and amended by the author. Do we not long for that new and more perfect edition, corrected and amended by the author? That is a Christian hope, a hope which starts in the here and now, just as the seed sprouts and grows. We too bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives as Christ within us empowers and embraces us. What a thought. Let us pray. And I'm using a poem called The Present Tense. Thank you, O God, for the time that is now, for all the newness your minutes allow. Keep us alert with your presence of mind to fears and longings that move humankind. Thank you for hopes of the day that will come, for all the change that will happen in time. God, for the future, our spirits prepare. Hallow our doubts and redeem us from fear. Make us afraid of the thoughts that delay, faithful in all the affairs of today. Keep us, Creator, from playing it safe. Thank you that now is the time of our life. Amen. Our second hymn reminds us that our hope is in Christ alone.
Our prayers today are led for us by Gordon Junior. Um, he ha- wears two hats and he's wearing his Ashkirk hat for this morning. As we have heard this morning in our reading, Paul wrote of the resurrection body and that when our body may be buried, it is mortal. But when it is raised, it will become immortal. We have those ultimately portentous words in verse 49. Just as we wear the likeness of the man made of earth, so we will wear the likeness of the man from heaven. When mortal is changed to immortal death, he writes, death will be destroyed and victory will be complete. Where death is your victory? Where death is your power to hurt? We can all speculate on what existence after mortal death there may be. We may believe, but we do not and cannot know how or what that may be. Many, of course, have given thought to these possibilities and have done so over centuries, but without perhaps nearing any resolution of Paul's mystery. Here is the offering, one offering, of Khalil Gilbran from the Prophet. You would know the secret of death, but how shall you find it unless you seek it in the heart of life? The owl whose night-bound eyes are blind unto the day cannot unveil the mystery of light. If you would indeed behold the spirit of death, Open your heart wide unto the body of life, for life and death are one, even as the river and the sea are one. In the depths of your hopes and desires lies your silent knowledge of the beyond, and like seeds dreaming beneath the snow, your heart dreams of spring. Trust the dreams, for in them is hidden the gate to eternity. Your fear of death is but a trembling of the shepherd when he stands before the king whose hand is to be laid upon him in honour. Is the shepherd not joyful beneath his trembling that he shall wear the mark of the king? Yet is he not more mindful of his trembling? For what is it to die but to stand naked in the wind and to melt into the sea? And what is it to cease breathing, but to free the breath from the restless tides, that it may rise and expand and seek God unencumbered? Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing, and when you have reached the mountain top, then you shall begin to cry. But when the earth shall claim your limbs, then shall you dance. Let us pray for those who have died and those of us all from this earth who remain bound to so die. And meantime, let us pray to God the Father who has reconciled all things to himself in Christ for peace among the nations that God may rid the world of violence, cruelty and selfishness and help people to grow in justice and harmony while working together to protect the beautiful but broken natural world that we share. For Christian people everywhere, that we may joyfully proclaim and live out our faith in Jesus Christ as the Redeemer of the world. For those who suffer from hunger, sickness, poverty, unemployment or loneliness, that the presence of the Holy Spirit may bring them health, rest and comfort. We take a few moments to remember quietly those of a special concern to us today. For us and our dear ones, let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God today and forever. 
We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Saviour. Amen. Because there's so few of us, we'll go out that door. <laughs> and the, the collection plate is just on your left as you, as you go out. Our final hymn reminds us of the fact that in the bulb there is a flower, that there is something in our lives that God alone can see. And I meant to say a big thank you to David for coming to play for us today as, as Andy is having a week, weekend off, a well-earned weekend off. The strength of God be your support. The light of God be your guide. The love of God be your joy. Go knowing the presence of the almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit in your life today and every day.